Yo, you're into VR and like to spend most of your time socializing on VR chat, but you're always being asked, do you happen to have an optimized avatar? Have you tried crunch compression to lower your file size? Maybe try atlasing. What the heck are all these long alien words? I don't even know what atlasing is. Not to worry, I'll explain in a few easy steps. Optimizing an avatar or world consists of a few steps to make sure the most potato of devices can render your creations. How do we do this? Well, one of the most common suggestions people give is crunch compressing your textures. That helps in reducing the download size. Sounds great, right? Well, for download speed, yes, but for VRAM usage, not so much. You see, after they're downloaded, the files are uncompressed. They sit there using pretty close to the original size before being compressed. So how can we reduce the size even further? First thing we can try to do is lowering the texture size straight in Unity, which helps quite a lot. But after a certain point, the result starts becoming noticeable. So secondly, we can perform what's called atlasing, which allows us to fit our textures together onto a single texture, which in turn reduces the file size. This lets us retain as much resolution as we want for specific textures and lowers the draw calls for greater performance. Wait, there's yet another term you're throwing at us, Swa. What the heck are draw calls? Draw calls are the process of drawing a material, which is the instructions for how to project textures on geometry. So the more materials you have, the more times a draw needs to occur with each frame, which can add up very quickly, affecting your overall experience. So now that you have at least a basic understanding of these very important concepts, this atlasing process will make much more sense. You'll need to have at least the very basics down for getting around Blender. You can find a few long form basics on Blender videos over on my Patreon. For this process, I'm using a couple paid add-ons I highly recommend if you're an active creator. I'm getting no kickback from this, but trust me, I don't know how I went all this time without using these tools. They'll make your life so much easier and increase the speed of your workflow. First, we need our model. I'm a huge Gorillaz fan and I found this really cool one over on DeviantArt. Check out this creator's other amazing work. Once we've got our model into Blender, we'll select all the meshes and combine them with Control J. Next, we need to go through all the materials and find out which ones are using the same exact textures. We'll select all the faces that use those materials and assign them to one. Let's delete the unused ones. That's already saving us a ton of materials, but we can go further. Continue this process until we have no duplicate materials. Next up, we'll go through and adjust the size of our UVs for our new texture atlas. For this process, let's start off by creating a new UV map. Keep the camera icon selected on our original UV map. I like to move everything out of the way so we can get a better idea of how much UV space each texture uses. For textures that won't be as visible, both from afar or close up, we can make those take up less space. After we've done that, we'll use UV Packmaster to give us the most efficient packing. For faces that are already overlapping, I keep the option set to any part and then hit the pack button. Nice. Once we're finished with that, and assuming you've already installed Simple Bake, let's head over to the Render tab and scroll down to Simple Bake. The options are pretty self-explanatory and run in order from top to bottom. These are just some of the most common settings I like to use, but your options may vary. If your textures use any bit of alpha, check off that option as well. The most helpful feature is the ability to designate a folder for saving your baked out textures and creating a copy of your mesh, just in case you need to undo and rebake again. Hit bake, then wait just a few minutes. Done. If any of your materials had alpha and the shaders that you're using support the texture, you can place that texture in its respective slot. If not, you can composite the alpha channel in a photo editing software to include the alpha channel in your texture. You can see how the before and after look exactly the same. The one big difference is that it's significantly more optimized now and your PC and your friend's PC will thank you for those extra frames. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something and share that knowledge with your friends. Be sure to follow for future tutorials and other SWA stuffs. See you on the next one. Later.